The first round of the NHL draft was this past Wednesday, and with it, as always, followed drama and emotion. After all the excitement of the event has died down, we now look ahead to what the future could hold for the players and teams who drafted them. The day is always focused on the players, but in making the selections they did, many teams have provided indications as to how they view their roster, how they view specific players, or what the path forward for them is going to be. Today, let's look at what each pick in the first round could mean for each organization that made it. In a move that surprised nobody, the Chicago Blackhawks took Connor Bedard first overall. Adding Bedard to Chicago's roster accelerates the rebuild dramatically, as the Blackhawks now have the superstar centerpiece in place to start contending in four or five seasons from now. Taking Bedard means Chicago has the new face of their franchise and is ready to usher in a new era of Blackhawks hockey. A move that did surprise many people was the Ducks selection at two, as they took Leo Carlson. Prior to the draft, it was well known that some teams had Carlson ranked at number two, despite general consensus ranking him third. In taking Carlson, the Ducks show that they're comfortable with their future 1-2 center punch of Zegers and McTavish. Although he's listed as a center, Carlson played much of his draft year on the wing, and the likely expectation is that he'll start as a wing when playing for Anaheim in his rookie year. The Columbus Blue Jackets finally got the top-line center that the franchise has been after since its inception. With this pick, the Jackets immediately become a much more competitive roster, and considering all the additions they've made in the offseason, could even be a sneaky playoff contender as soon as next season. Expect pick 3 Fantilli and pick 34 Brindley to reunite as line mates years down the road, in what could form two-thirds of the future Columbus first line. San Jose landed the player that could be the new face of the franchise in Will Smith. Smith had some incredible numbers for the U.S. National Development Program and is a much better fourth overall pick than the Sharks would get in a normal year. Rumors are that Columbus really wanted Smith at three, and maybe they changed their minds after Fantilli dropped to them. The Sharks now have in their prospect pool a creative center that teams are very high on, and overall, a very solid young prospect forward group. Montreal fans may have wanted someone else at five, but what they got is the consensus top defenseman in David Reinbacker. The Habs grabbed one of the most sought-after commodities in the NHL, and selecting the big defensively reliable right-handed defender. The pick could also indicate a strong belief in their 2022 second round pick, Lane Hudson, who had a fantastic past season in college. Hudson and Reinbacker could form a dynamic top pairing in the team's future, with two players that complement each other perfectly. With this pick, Montreal has taken a very offensively talented group and rounded it out a little more with David Reinbacker. One of the late risers in draft rankings was Dmitry Simashev, but even still, it was a surprise to see him go as high as number 6. Going into the draft, many organizations had landed on Simashev as their highest-ranked defenseman, to which Arizona scouts most likely agree. In grabbing Simashev, the Coyotes take who they believe to be the best defender in the draft, a tall, mobile, talented Russian. They followed with another big swing at 12th overall, selecting fellow Yaroslavl player Daniel Bu. The slide of the most discussed player on draft day ends here. The Philadelphia Flyers were the team to select Matvey Michkov at 7th overall. This means two big things for the Flyers organization. For one, the rebuilding org now has the franchise-level talent that's necessary to contend for the future. It also means the window to acquire talent begins now. Michkov's KHL deal ends in 2026, and it will be up to Briere and co. to find the right pieces to surround Michkov should he come over then. The Flyers also got one of the best names in the draft at 22. Washington missed out on another franchise-changing Russian, but landed another high-talent winger in Ryan Leonard. The Capitals are in a bit of a strange position in terms of what the direction forward should be for the franchise. Many of their stars are regressing as they age, but they're never out of it as long as Ovechkin still leads the way. Ryan Leonard could be a future replacement for Tom Wilson, or Wilson could be a perfect future mentor for the young power forward. Nate Danielson was a slight surprise at 9, given his presumed lower upside than many of the other names still available. 
What selecting him at 9 could mean for the Red Wings is that they're confident in the young talent they already have. Danielson is considered to be pretty safe, and could be molded into whatever type of player Iserman wants as the likes of Sider, Larkin, and Raymond take on the big minutes. Detroit pulled another great talent out of Sweden with Axel Sandin Palika at 17th overall. St. Louis had three first-round picks in the 2023 draft, the first of which was Dalibor Dvorsky. For the past month or so, the Blues have been rumored to have interest in moving on from one of their later picks. They opted to hold on to them all, selecting Otto Stenberg and Theo Lindstein. An organization with some solid young talent got a much stronger farm system and can use them to build up a new young core or move them for more win-now assets. St. Louis also pulled players exclusively out of Sweden in the first round, a trend to look out for from them in future drafts. Another defenseman who rose late in draft boards was Tom Willander, who ultimately went to Vancouver at 11. Willander is the Canucks' first defenseman drafted in the opening round since Quinn Hughes in 2018. He could become a great complement to Hughes and help make up the top pair for the Canucks of the future. Vancouver is one of the more directionless franchises right now, and Willander will be tasked with helping them usher in a new era of success. The Buffalo Sabres scored yet another win with young players at the draft. The highly ranked Zach Benson became a Sabre at pick number 13. At this point, Buffalo inarguably has a top three crop of young players across the league, and likely the very best. Expect to see them move on from some of those young players soon, as they'll need to build on the current squad to try to crack the playoffs. The Pittsburgh Penguins made first-round selections in consecutive drafts for the first time in 10 years. This year, they took Braden Yeager, a versatile forward out of Moose Jaw. New organizational leader Kyle Dubas wants to continue to try and win Pittsburgh another cup. Could this mean Jaeger's time is limited in Pittsburgh? We'll have to wait and see what their plan is. After over 20 years as Nashville GM, David Poyle made his last moves in charge at the draft. Taking over his position is Barry Trotz, who made clear that he wants big swings on players drafted in early rounds. At 15, the Predators selected Matthew Wood, a player compared to Tage Thompson. Barry Trotz showed his draft tendencies to the Nashville fans and took a calculated risk with the high potential of Wood. Calgary is another team with a new GM at the helm, and Craig Conroy's first selection charge was Samuel Honzik. Honsik was another player considered a bit of a safer pick, a reliable prospect for a bit of a weaker system. With Honsik, the Toffoli trade, and other moves likely soon to come, Flames fans will quickly understand Conroy's view of the team and what's in store for their future. Colby Barlow went to Winnipeg at number 18, and what could be a pick that defines a new era for the Jets. Players like Connor Hellebuck and Mark Shifley have all been involved in trade speculation while Blake Wheeler was bought out. Expect plenty more picks and prospects to come back to Winnipeg in the future, and Barlow, along with the likes of Perfetti and McGrordy, could lead the way for the new squad. Seattle made only their third ever first-round selection, and the first that isn't in the top five or a center. Edward Shala was that pick at 20, a high upside player that was formerly projected around the top five and top ten. The Kraken are already a very strong team, and given their already solid development history, could take the years to develop Shala. Alternatively, he could be moved to help push them over the edge soon. The rest of this offseason will be telling. Charlie Stramel was another highly projected player earlier in the year, and ended up falling to Minnesota at pick 21. Minnesota's most recent selection out of the Big Ten was Luke Coonan, another right-shot center. The Wild continue to be in a strange situation with the massive dead cap hits of Parise and Suter weighing on the team. Players like Stramel can be expected to stick around, as talented players on ELCs will be essential to the team's success for the next few years. Fifteen picks after his second linemate was selected, Gabe Perot comes off the board to the Rangers. It's no secret that New York has had trouble developing top prospects, and has opted to trade some of them over the years as they look to win now. While some young players and picks may continue to be moved, don't expect that for Perot. 
The U.S. forward knows well how to play with high-end talents, perfect for a team with the likes of Panarin and Sabinejad. It's unusual for a team with so much NHL roster talent to use two first-round picks, but the Avalanche did just that. Callum Ritchie and Mikhail Gulyayev were two of the best prospects left available, and Colorado management came away from another draft looking good. The Toronto Maple Leafs kept their first-round pick for the first time since 2020, and used it to select Easton Cowan. This choice was considered the biggest reach of the first round, but reaffirms how we already know Leafs management views their team. Toronto already has their stars up front, and so they add some potential future secondary scoring with a smart, high-effort forward like Cowan. Carolina is well known for their analytical approach to building their roster, and they take a favorite among many draft nerds with Bradley Nadeau. Nadeau was the top pick out of the BCHL, an undersized forward that scores at high volume. As they've done year after year, Carolina reaffirmed their belief in a drafting strategy that's clearly worked wonders for them. Closing out the first round were the Stanley Cup champion Vegas Golden Knights. Their history suggests that they'll trade him as soon as they can, but for now, David Enstrom is their newest talent up front. While the Golden Knights are a team without too much in their prospect system, what they've done clearly works for them, so expect similar moves from Vegas going forward. None of the teams pictured here had a pick in the first round, although there are bound to be steals in later rounds as there always are. Outside of the first round, teams such as Columbus, Carolina, Washington, and Seattle have all gotten credit from scouts as getting excellent value out of their picks. After a year of build-up for what was talked about as an elite-level draft class, the 2023 NHL draft has come and gone. No big trades took place on draft day, but the official picks, as always, yielded a few surprises. Future superstars had their moment in Nashville, and now fans get to watch them develop over the coming few seasons. With a class this good, though, we can expect to see some of them make their mark in the NHL as soon as this next season.